you know, I, this is a good segue. Uh, I'm hopped up. You know, Rogan, he went ahead and responded yesterday to the, late last night, he put out a 10 minute long video. I encourage everybody to go and watch it. His uh, thoughts on the uh, current controversy with Spotify. Let's hear it from the man himself. The problem I have with the term misinformation, especially today, is that many of the things that we thought of as misinformation just a short while ago are now accepted as fact. Like for instance, eight months ago, if you said, if you get vaccinated, you can still catch COVID and you can still spread COVID, you would be removed from social media. They would, they would ban you from certain platforms. Now that's accepted as fact. If you said, I don't think cloth masks work, you would be banned from social media. Now, that's openly and repeatedly stated on CNN. If you said, I think it's possible that COVID-19 came from a lab, you'd be banned from many social media platforms. Now, that's on the cover of Newsweek. All of those theories that at one point in time were banned were openly discussed by those two men that I had on my podcast that have been accused of dangerous misinformation. I do not know if they're right. I don't know because I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I'm just a person who sits down and talks to people and has conversations with them. Do I get things wrong? Absolutely, I get things wrong. But I try to correct them. Whenever I get something wrong, I try to correct it because I'm interested in telling the truth. I'm interested in finding out what the truth is. And I'm interested in having interesting conversations with people that have differing opinions. Um, I'm not interested in only talking to people that uh, have one perspective. That's one of the reasons why I had Sanjay Gupta on, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, who I respect very much, and I really enjoyed our conversation together. He has a different opinion than those men do. I had Dr. Dr. Michael Osterholm on at the very beginning of the pandemic. Um, he is on President Biden's COVID-19 advisory board. I had uh, Dr. Peter Hotez on, who is uh, a vaccine expert. I'm interested in finding out what is correct and find, I'm also finding out how people come to these conclusions and what the facts are. You know, and Crystal, he actually goes on to say, uh, he said, look, you want to label it? Fine. Uh, in terms of Spotify's decision, I'll go into some of that more in my monologue. At the end, though, I mean, this is the most gracious response. He goes, you know what? Thank you even to my haters. You keep me sharp. I mean, look, he acknowledges in there, he says, I'm gonna be having on people with differing opinions. He said, look, if anything, a mistake I made was when I have a controversial podcast, so if I have a guest with differing views right after that, he's like, but I schedule it myself, so I get it, you know, let it get out of hand. Again, it shows you that it's an utterly unique product. I, I, it's just so repulsive to me to watch this ongoing campaign of which there is a lot more going on behind the scenes, which I will detail, but of which is so, it's a singled out, as we just talked about when it came to NBC. You have liars and propagandists in the media who get away with 10 times murder uh, and more of what anything Rogan could even be accused of doing, let alone actually be responsible of. They fail upwards. They have no labels that are placed upon them. Why don't NBC's broad, uh, advertisers boycott them for hiring right. somebody who is an Iraq war propagandist? The selective outrage and the selective pressure is doing done for one purpose. They want to demonize not only Rogan, but anybody who listens to Rogan, anybody who associates with Rogan, anybody who would defend Rogan and make him politically toxic and unpalatable and to demonize the people who listen to him, who support him, and more, and make him untouchable uh, because they're afraid of the power that he has accumulated in our society. That's the one. And they need a scapegoat for their own failures. Yes. And so it's very easy. I mean, they, this caricature they've painted of Rogan is so ridiculous It's also me. annoying. They yeah. make it like he's like Kim Jong-un or like every podcast is just like lying about vaccines yes. one after another. Listen, I we talked about the Malone podcast, yep. Dr. Malone right. podcast in particular. I had a lot of issues with it. That guy's just wrong. He cherry picks the data. He uh, is actually totally wrong on some of the things that he said. I didn't even listen to the other guy. What's his name? Peter, Peter McCullough. McCullough. Yeah. I so listened to both. I can't, yeah. I can't really speak as much to that one. And I will say, you know, in terms of Rogan's response, one of the things he led with is like, here's their credentials. They're a doctor. Mm -hmm. This one has these patents. They're most published or cited. Right. He's, you know, involved with the development of the mRNA vaccine. That stuff to me doesn't have as much weight ultimately. Like mm -hmm. to me, the credentials aren't enough. And personally, I would not choose to interview 
those individuals because they are much more deeply steeped in this sort of like medical and scientific jargon. And I know I would get snowed yeah. because I just, this isn't, I don't spend all day long thinking about COVID and medicine and epidemiology. And so if you have someone who is very sort of advanced and has all of the scientific jargon, it's very easy for them to sort of, you know, to, to put out these talking points of this study and that study and the other study that you haven't looked into deeply. And it's very hard to fact check in real time. All of that being said, the caricature that is created of Rogan that he speaks to as well is so ridiculous. Like he has on people all across the spectrum, including people, as he points to, Sanjay Gupta and others, who have very traditional and represented in mainstream media views on vaccination and on coronavirus. And ultimately, the idea that Joe Rogan is like the biggest problem in society and the thing that you're going to like go to the wall to protest over, to me, it's just beyond silly and absurd. I thought this was a very classy response from Rogan. Yeah. It showed why people really do trust and appreciate him because you can see he is reflecting on it himself and not just trying to like hardline like they're ridiculous he's thinking about mm -hmm. how could i have handled this better he's like hey i can book this for and you know i what said what could that i too? do different you know and and actually like expressing gratitude for the criticism which is way more than you know personally i'm like too fragile to to be yeah. able to do that <laughs> you know look i said this before vinay prasad came on the show we did a half hour long segment with him dr vinay prasad and specifically broke down some of the most problematic claims in the malone interview and in the mccullough interview as well it was three thousand words it was here's claim here's the fact check all of that and even though it was critical of Joe's own podcast, I sent him that article and he tweeted it out almost immediately and expressed interest. He read it. I mean, this, what more could you ask for? Have you ever seen Brian Stelter or Jake Tapper or any of these other people even acknowledge any of the criticism of the outright lies that they have told all, not, not you know, I only did CNN there. Okay, let's include many of the people on Fox News, many of the people on MSNBC. They would never do this. And, you know, there was a segment over the weekend that CNN did. We'll cover it tomorrow, but I'll mention it here. Where they said, people are fundamentally angry about wanting to not being able to stop Rogan's audience from wanting news that is bad for them. We are all haunted by the specter of this guy who is listening to Joe Rogan and internalizing this bad information. So they think that it's bad information on Joe Rogan, but that you can get good information on CNN. You ask me who has lied more, who is 10 times more destructive, 100, 100,000, I barely have the exponents to describe, who has been more destructive and who never to American society, error. who never Never does any self-reflection or contemplation. It is the mainstream media, 100%. They are absolute enemies um, whenever it comes to this. I'm willing to use this rhetoric at this point because watching this happen to somebody who I deeply respect and who has Look, elevated us on a personal level, but even if I had never been on the Joe Rogan experience or any of that, I've been a fan of his for several years. The way that they have pointed, uh, uh, painted him in the press is outrageous. And, uh, you know, it's become a meme now. None of these people actually listen. Do you think, do you think every guest is a COVID guest? It's usually them getting high and like with comedians and talking a bunch of bullshit, which is great. That's originally what made it popular. In my opinion, the most controversial things and subjects that he touches are when we question archaeological science like Graham Hancock <laughs> and the Younger Dryas Earth Impact Theories and whether the Sphinx is 10,000 years old or whether Christianity is actually the subject of like psychedelically tainted milk. These are way more controversial in my, by the way, these are the episodes I live for, you know, those are my favorite ones or David Cho or I mean, uh, Anthony Bourdain, those, those are the best interviews um, that he's ever done. The CrossFit stuff, you know, you know carnivore diet. Diet, vegan diet, debates, whatever. That's what the Joe Rogan experience really is. You would never know that um, if you didn't actually listen. You can tell I'm, you know, for those of you who listen as much as I do, this this is what you really get from it. So to watch this campaign and the the uh, selective outrage and the, the way that they're trying to weaponize him or you know, weaponize uh, popular culture against him is really disgusting. And I also recognize too that it's not about Dr. Malone, it's not about Dr. Peter McCullough. It's about power. This CNN segment is everything. They want the good information, their information, to be the only information that people get. Yeah, I mean, his audience is so much bigger than theirs. It's and, he, and people, and it's so much more influential, too, yeah. because, um, you know, CNN and MSNBC and Fox News, I mean, they benefit from these sort of, like, legacy systems. It's on in the background. Like, people are sort of half 
tuned into it. They don't care about any of the individual personalities. I mean, we saw it when we were um, when we were talking about our book. Oh, you could tell when you went on. I mean, any cable news segment that we did. Nobody bought yeah, the book they, from they that. Don't <laughs> was care. Like, because yeah. people aren't, they don't care what these personalities have to say. They right. don't trust them. There was a New York Times reporter who put out a tweet that was basically like, you know, Rogan is what he is. Maybe the, those of us in the media ought to ask why people trust him more than they trust us. Right. And, and he people got yeah. melted yeah. down. He got, right. he got wrecked. Because you right. can't say that. You can't say, like, hey, maybe we should do some self reflection about why this guy is so popular and trusted and like the numbers in terms of trust in mainstream media just keep falling and falling and falling. Oh, no. Can't say that. Can't possibly have that conversation. I don't know. I had to laugh this morning. I got a text from a friend of mine who is at home in Brazil Mm -hmm. visiting her family. And she was like, what's going on with Rogan? I heard on three different Brazilian radio stations (laughs) that something is happening. I'm like, you know, with all of the problems in the right. world. Yeah, Brazil especially, like by the way. conflict <laughs> in Ukraine and, you know, climate crisis and all, like, democracy falling apart. All of these issues in the world. And you're going to think the biggest problem where you're going to, like, stage your protest is over Joe Rogan. And, oh, by the way, and I know you're going to talk about mm. this in your monologue, but for the non-premium subscribers, like, the idea for Neil Young that you're going to take your music down off of Spotify and you're going to push people towards Amazon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, right. Amazon is some beacon for light and goodness in the world? I mean, Rogan could never hope to do as much damage as Amazon yes. has done with their— Spotify is evil, so I'm going to go to the most evil, evil corporation co- in the United States. the planet States. that yeah. has ever existed, practically. I mean, just crushing cool. labor and the labor market and uh, unions and firing people and surveilling them and getting, you know, sanctioned by the NLRB and just totally destroying, like, small-town America economies. Yeah, that's— that's the place where you should put push progressive dollars towards Amazon. That's going to be really good for the world. No, very well said, Crystal. It just shows you how empty these people are. Uh, we'll continue to stand up for them, and we will continue to uh, keep you guys updated. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the main. Mainstream media.